I request our registrar Mr. A. N. Ramachandra to kindly lead the academic procession. Request everyone to please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, I now call upon Mr. Kaushal and friends for the invocation. Thank you, friends. I request Professor Madhav Rao to deliver the welcome speech. Kaleda Kalava Kuritu, Baruva Dinagada Kuritu, Chinti Sudu Vertha, E Dina Nimadu, Enu Madulu Hita, Endu Yochu Sudu Samartha, Chanakya Niti Sara. It is literally translated as futile is to think of yesterday or imagine for tomorrow. Rather, plan to do good now. Think of today for glorious and satisfying achievements in life. Thus spoke Chanakya, the eminent statesman India has ever produced. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It is in the spirit of this message that I, on behalf of the chairman, members of the governing body, director, faculty, staff, students, and alumni of IIIT Bangalore, welcome our chief guest, Professor K. Vijay Raghavan, and guest of honor, Mr. Natarajan Chandrasekharan. It is also my pleasure to welcome the CEOs and the executives of IT companies, officials of the government of Karnataka, members of the academia, graduating students, and their families, the press, and the invitees. I once again welcome you all. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I request our chief guest, guest of honor, chairman, members of the governing body, and the director to kindly light the lamp. I request Sridhar and Laksha to join. Thank you. I request our chairman, Mr. S. Gopalakrishnan, to declare the convocation open. I declare the 13th convocation of the International Institute of Information Technology, Bangalore, open. Thank you, sir. I request our director, Professor S. Sadagopan, to present the annual report of the institute. Ellarigu Namaskara. Good morning. Chief guest of the day, Professor Vijay Raghavan, Director NCBS and Secretary Department of Biotechnology. Guest of Honor, Mr. Chandrasekharan, CEO and Managing Director TCS, Chairman of our Governing Council, Mr. S. Gopalakrishnan, other members of the Governing Body, members of the Senate, my distinguished faculty colleagues, fellow academics from other institutions, my dear students, parents of our students, alumni, staff, distinguished guests, members of the media, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the 13th Convocation of Triple ITB. It's a moment of joy when 149 of our students, one PhD, four MS Bay Research, and 144 MTech students graduate. Let me first congratulate our class of 2013. The year 2012-13, marks an important milestone in the evolution of this young institute. A major initiative in the form of a five-year integrated MTech program that took off in August 2012. We are also kind of launching a new set of buildings in what is called the third campus or the third phase of the campus on a two-acre plot just behind the campus. On June 22nd, we performed the Bhumi Puja 
Our students and alumni continue to win laurels on several fronts. First, three of our students, Jeffrey, Jeffrey is very much here, he graduated last year, Jeffrey Joseph, Roshan, Skandakumar and Yogesh, with help from Professor Josna Bapet, won the first prize in the Intel Embedded Challenge. <laughs> our IM Tech students and couple of MTech students together with the guidance from Professor Madhav Rao, won laurels in three programming contests. The IEEE Extreme Programming Contest, the ACM Intermediate International Collegiate Program Contest, as well as Infosys Hashers. And Data V, founded by our alum Karthik, is one of the top three emerging startups of the Tech Spark 2012. Our students are active on the cultural front too. Professor Prasanna was granted two US patents, granted two US patents. <laughs> And in successive two months, one in October, one in November, I wish he had had. <laughs> Professor Balaji Parthsarthi won the prestigious Emerging Leaders Fellowship at the Australia India Institute of the University of Melbourne. <laughs> Professor Chandrasekhar visited Hof University in Germany for four weeks, as well as EFRI in Paris in summer. Two large projects in the area of ESDM and e-content management were funded at IIITB in this year, and we are grateful to the government of Karnataka for this large-scale funding. Institution building is an act of faith, but for the trust-based relationship between the governing body and the executive, IIITB would not be what it is today. <laughs> Let me once again thank you all for contributing to our short and sweet journey, and look forward to continue to support in the many years decades and centuries to come because academic institutions survive for centuries. And let me congratulate the graduating batch once again and thank you all. Thank you, sir. I request our director, Professor S. Sadagopan, to kindly seek permission from the chairman, Mr. S. Gopalakrishnan, to present the PhD, MS by research and MTech degrees to the respective students of the graduating class. Sir, I have the honor of requesting you to permit us to present the students who have qualified for the PhD, MS by research, and MTech degrees in information technology. This convocation has been called to confer the relevant degrees in information technology upon the candidates who have been certified to be worthy of the same. Let the candidates stand forward and take the oath. Thank you, sir. I request our registrar to administer the oath to the students of the graduating class that shall guide them throughout their lives. The students of the graduating class are requested to raise and take the oath. I hereby solemnly declare, I hereby solemnly declare and, promise that and promise that if admitted to the degree, if admitted to the degree for which I have been recommended, I shall, I shall in my daily life, in my daily life and, conversation, and conversation conduct myself, conduct myself as, befits as befits a member of this institute, of this institute that, I shall, that I shall to the utmost of my capacity and opportunity support the cause of my morality and sound learning and, and that, and that as far as, in me lies, as far as in me lies, I shall uphold, I shall uphold and, advance and advance the social order, the social order and the well-being of my fellow citizens. I shall faithfully and carefully, carefully, and carefully fulfill, the fulfill the duties of the profession, of the profession to, which I may be admitted, to which I may be admitted by virtue of my degree that I shall, on all occasions, maintain its purity and reputation. And I shall never deviate from the straight path of honorable exercise. And I shall, by my actions, make India legitimately proud of myself. 
Thank you, sir. Thank you, friends. Kindly take your seat. I request our professor, director, Professor S. Sadagopan, to request our chairman, Mr. S. Gopalakrishnan, to accept the students who have qualified for the relevant degree. Sir, as director, I have the honor of presenting to you the candidates for the award of PhD, MS by Research, and Master of Technology in Information Technology, whose names are set out in the list. They have been found qualified for the said degree, to which I pray they may be admitted. By virtue of the authority vested in me as the chairman of the governing body, and upon the recommendations of the Senate of International Institute of Information Technology, Bangalore, I admit all the qualified candidates to the relevant degree. Thank you, sir. I request our chairman, Mr. S. Gopala Krishnan, to distribute the degrees to the graduating students. Thank you, sir. I request our chairman, Mr. S. Gopalakrishnan, to sign the register confirming the award of degrees to the graduating students. Thank you, sir. I request our chief guest, Professor K. Vijay Raghavan, Secretary to Government of India, Department of Bio uh, Biotechnology, New Delhi, to kindly give away the medals and the prizes to the graduating students. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. I now request our chief guest, Professor K. Vijay Raghavan, to deliver the convocation address. Thank you very much. Um, respected Chairman Gopalakrishnan, uh, guest of honor, Mr. Chandrasekharan, Director uh, Dr. Chandra uh, Sadagopan, uh, and members of the Senate and the Board, it's indeed a really uh, great pleasure to be here today. And it's a very exciting time when you actually go away from the cloistered and comfortable environments of the superb institution to explore the world. And the world today seems an extraordinarily uh, complex place. And some of us look to our heroes, uh, some of who are here, uh, and hope to uh, do well. Uh, others worry given the kinds of situations and the problems and the challenges whether we will do well. So what I will try to do is to tell you very briefly what some of our challenges are and how actually people such as you can meet them uh, with your determination, courage and enthusiasm. I'd start by saying that we are of the wrong color. And I don't mean my pigmentation, I'm quite comfortable with that as all of you are. But we are of the wrong color when we look at any map of the world. If you go to Google and say global prevalence of malaria, and you look at that map, right, then you see India is of the wrong color. If you go to Google and say leishmaniasis or tuberculosis or you know, any other disease. I had actually a list of these maps which I thought I might have a chance to show it to you, but it's actually rather frightening to see if you look at malaria and its prevalence, dengue, Japanese encephalitis virus, lymphatic filariasis, children under five years with stunted growth. Sub-Saharan Africa has 39% of its children under five years with stunted growth. And stunted growth means body size, but it also means stunted brain development. And this is a serious problem for us. And if sub-Saharan Africa has 39% of its people, uh, of its under five-year-olds with stunted growth, India has 47% of its population under five years of old with stunted growth. We are far worse than sub-Saharan Africa. This is a very frightening statistic. 
But this is the color of the map, no matter which map we look at. If you look at poverty, the number of the percentage of a population under a poverty line which we define, again, India doesn't come out well. And finally, if you start looking at literacy, we don't do well there either, compared to many other countries and compared to many other poor countries. And even more finally, you need to go to organizations which chart out the level of corruption in the world and we come out on top. Even there, the map is, is colored. So this is the nature of the problem. If you actually have to deal with our solutions, we had better grapple with, grapple with what we have instead of pretending that we could somehow magically take a large country like ours to go back. Bhutan has got the luxury of enclosing itself and saying we will be at this particular timeline in human civilization. Liechtenstein has the luxury. India has to deal with its problems. So we are risk averse in summary. We have a viewpoint which actually means that we want the safest possible aircraft, and the safest possible aircraft is one which does not take off. That will never, ever crash. Yeah? And that's the kind of aircraft we want. We conflate evidence and ideology. We have solutions to all our problems without going through the data, and that's not going to work either. We must understand that risk analysis involves an important principle. It's called the precautionary principle, and which it states that when an activity raises threats of harm to human health or the environment, precautionary principles should be taken even if some cause and effect relationships are not fully established scientifically. So it is true that when we embark on new technologies, we should be careful and we should take rather substantive precautions. But we misuse the precautionary principle, we misapply it, the precautionary principle cannot be applied on chosen technologies or activities, even as evidence mounts to the lack of threat, right? Finally, we need to have better and better regulation, which allows people with innovation to come into the pipeline leading to the market, right? Regulation doesn't mean it's so stringent that you say no to everything. That's the safest form of regulation. It's like the aircraft not taking part. So science, therefore, can be an agent of transformation. Evidence-based science can actually, when communicated well to our society, can be an agent of transformation. And life sciences in particular today, integrated with IT, integrated with physics, chemistry, and engineering, is vital in addressing our problems of food, health, nutrition, and energy. So we need to work together at, 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 with our society to convey the importance of evidence uh, in making decisions. I might have given the impression that I, ha I have views of certain kinds on these matters, whether it's nuclear ma uh, energy or GM or clinical trials. And of course I do have views. And I might have given the impression that I have uh, differing views from other people on these topics. And of course that is true. But it's very important not to talk past each other constantly and not listen to each other. One of the very distressing sides we see on television, which I now rarely watch, is people are constantly airing very strong views without listening to what other people's strong views are. So it doesn't matter if I have strong views on a subject which are orthogonal to someone else's strong views. We must sit down and push an agenda of calmly discussing facts and conveying that discussing evidence is important much more than discussing ideologies. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. I request our guest of honor, Mr. N. Chandrasekharan, CEO and Managing Director, Tata Consultancy Services, to address the gathering. Chairman, Mr. Gopal Krishnan, Chief Guest, Mr. Vijay Raghavan, Professor Sadagoban, members of the Governing Council, members of the Senate, Mr. Murthy, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, and friends from the media. It is uh, truly a great honor for me to be here and have an opportunity to share a few thoughts. You are all going to start your professional life very soon and you will all be joining institutions of repute and will be pursuing your own aspirations. I was reflecting back and I thought I will share a couple of thoughts on leadership and values. When I say leadership, I do not mean a leadership that refers to a position of authority, 
a title. I mean having the ability to make an impact, which all of you will have, either around the people or on any specific initiatives. And such leadership is built by practicing a set of values. And that forces us to ask the question, what is values? Often values are taken for integrity and ethics. Yes, definitely that is true. But what I mean by values are values that are certain beliefs that each one of us have and pursue no matter whether we spend the time in reflecting and understanding what one's values are. The immediate answer that comes to all of our mind is, you know, honesty and ethics and integrity and so on. But each one of us pursues certain values. It's pretty important to reflect on these values that each one of us believe in and practice them and it becomes equally important to also understand the values of the people we work with so that we can relate to them better. And the same is true about the organization we work for. For example, if I believe that knowledge is something that I believe in, then I end up enriching my knowledge and also try and appreciate other people who focus on building knowledge. And if humility is something that I believe in, then even if I become very knowledgeable, I will have the humility to carry it on my shoulders. When you don't have an introspection on these kind of values, you pretty much will do what you want, but you may not be consistent. That is the message that I thought I will share with you. We are living in an exciting world, and I'm pretty sure that all of you have got huge aspirations to work for a firm or to build your own enterprise. but. I am extremely bullish about the opportunities in the world and also opportunities in India. So I wish all, all of you a wonderful career and enjoy yourself today and every day from today. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I request our chairman, Mr. S. Gopalakrishnan, to address the gathering. Professor K. Vijay Raghavan, Mr. Chandrasekharan, Professor Sadagopan, Mr. Narayan Murthy, distinguished guests, families of faculty and students, faculty, students, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, congratulations to every one of the graduates, or more appropriately, graduates, since you have all received your certificates already. This is an important occasion a milestone for each one of you and a joyous occasion for you and your family. There are many ways an educational institution is evaluated. They include the teaching and the learning environment, volume, income, and reputation of research, research influence through citations, innovations through income from sponsored projects, international outlook based on the faculty students and research. IIIT Bangalore is developing well in all these dimensions and you heard the director's report card today. I am sure that the institute will continue to invest and develop to become one of the premier institutions in the country. To me personally, two other outcome criteria are important to evaluate an educational institution. They are, one, impact on society of the students who have passed out over the years, Second, impact on society of the research that the faculty and students undertake. Students go on to innovate and invent, creating new products. They occupy senior positions and influential positions in organizations. 
they create new businesses and organizations. The research undertaken create new ideas and products. They create growth in existing businesses or create new businesses. Jobs are created, wealth is generated, society progresses. So as you graduate today, there are lots of expectations from each one of you in making this institute proud of you and contribute to making this institute a more influential one. <clears throat> I believe that um, the future is bright as all other speakers have spoken. I wish each one of you a great future and congratulations again. Before I conclude, I want to thank Professor Vijay Raghavan and Mr. Chandrasekharan for participating in today's program. Thanks to all of you for listening to me. Thank you, sir. I request our graduating student, Mr. Jatin, to give the valedictory address. Good afternoon to all of you. I want to thank Professor Adhikopan and other academic educators for deeming me worthy of this opportunity. It is really a matter of pride and honor for me. The last two years have been instrumental in shaping me and everyone here as a well-rounded individual. I discovered myself and realized my true potential. I am sure many of you would agree. We all learned why it is imperative to move out of one's comfort zone in the pursuit of curiosity. Everyone at IIITB, from the person serving the food every day without fail in the campus mess, to the esteemed faculty members has been irreplaceable. I look around and see friends and mentors who have played integral role in my education here. However, as postgraduates, we must also realize that education is essentially a lifelong process. Our journey at IIITB might have ended successfully, but we now embark on a new expedition that will have its own set of challenges, as many would point out. However, I would like to avail of this opportunity to remind the graduating students of their responsibilities as well. As educated members of our society, it is our duty to resist, I'll say it again, it is our duty to resist becoming cogs in some giant wheels. Instead, we must endeavor to act as positive change, agents of positive change, who have the courage to stand up and ask the right questions. We must engage with the world around us in different roles and capacities, be critical of its shortcoming, and then muster the resolve to fake the change because our education, both vocational and moral, has empowered us to do so. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jatin. I request our chairman, Mr. S. Gopal Krishnan, to present our token of gratitude to our chief guest, Professor K. Vijay Raghavan. I request our chairman, Mr. S. Gopala Krishnan, to present a token of gratitude to our guest of honor, Mr. N. Chandrasekharan. Thank you, sir. I now request Professor Sujit Kumar Chakravarti to deliver the vote of thanks. Honorable dignitaries on the dais, Professor K. Vijayaraghavan, Secretary of Government of India, Department of Biotechnology, Mr. N. Chandrasekharan, CEO and Managing Director, Tata Consultancy Services, Mr. Gopalakrishnan, Chairman of the Board, Professor S. Sadagopan, our Director, members of the governing body, Senate members, guests, colleagues, and my dear friends. It is indeed a great honor and pleasure to be here to propose the vote of thanks for this very auspicious ceremony. First of all, I would like to thank our chief guest, Professor K. Vijayaraghavan, for being here and becoming a part of our ceremony. Your kind presence and your wise words will forever be a part of the fond memory that we and our graduating students will carry back from this place. Thank you, sir. I would like to thank Mr. Chandrasekharan, our guest of honor, for making time to be with us today, to be celebrating this solemn occasion in your company and presence makes us proud and doubles our joy. Thank you very much, sir. <laughs> Professor Sadagopan, our director, on the one hand is your vision which has made IIIT be, and this day a reality. 
and on the other is your eye for little details which made it possible to bring together an event of this magnitude. We thank you, sir, for being with us every moment. The medals and the awards presented to our deserving students came from our sponsors. I'd like to acknowledge our sponsors for your generous contribution to these tokens of appreciation. True, that students who graduate today have worked very hard to earn this day in their lives. But none of it would have been possible without the number of IT companies in Bangalore, elsewhere in India, and across the world. They are the ones who have made it all possible through offers of various scholarships, internships, and employment to our students. To all these organizations, many, many thanks. And sincere thanks go to the government of India and the government of Karnataka, who have sponsored us and supported us all along this journey. Finally, our graduating students, this is your day. I think this batch is one of the strong links connecting our past to our coming days. Thanks for being a, a proud and happy part of our story. Congratulations and thank you. Thank you, sir. I request our chairman to declare the convocation closed. I declare the 13th convocation of the International Institute of Information Technology, Bangalore, closed. Thank you, sir. I request the gathering to kindly rise for the national anthem. Take your seats. I request our guests on stage to kindly proceed for lunch at the main building and I also request the audience to remain seated till the guests leave the dais.